Watch how long I keep going up after I get off throttle. It's forever. Like this feels like I'm flying a lightweight racing drone, but I'm not. This thing is 850 grams. Oh. This is a 4S battery, four cells, 16.8 volts at full charge. This is a 6S battery, six cells, 25.2 volts at full charge. Which one is better? Unless you're a weirdo like Bubby FPV and Ladrib who prefer to fly 4S, most everybody in the five inch freestyle and racing world has moved on to 6S. And the reasons why 6S are better, we'll talk about those later in the video because if 6S is better than 4S, then whoa, why is nobody doing this? 8S, eight cells, 35, 36 something volts at full charge. And we've got ESCs right now that can take 8S voltage. And therefore, I have built this quadcopter, which has one of those ESCs in it. And we're gonna put this 8S battery on it and we're gonna rip the shit out. We're gonna see. Is 8S better than 6S? Is 8S the new 6S? I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. Before we fly this quadcopter, I wanna just take a second and explain the benefits of 6S and then the question we're gonna to try to answer in this video, which is do those benefits translate as we go to a higher voltage like 8S? Uh, and the benefits of a higher voltage are that you get higher RPM from the motors. But the way that we get there is a little confusing. You see, we've got motor KV, and we've got battery voltage. And battery voltage times motor KV equals the RPM at the prop. So we can get higher RPM at the prop and more thrust either by going to a higher voltage or by going to a higher KV or both. But there's a weird relationship there that sort of defies comprehension, at least by like normies like me. We used to fly 2400 kV motors on 4S batteries, and that was pretty like baseline. And then if you wanted to go to like high kV, you'd be at 27 or 2800 kV on 4S batteries with five inch props. And then much higher than that was just silly. You just wouldn't do it. The motor would be over propped. It would get super hot. It would get inefficient. It just wouldn't work right. But when we went to 6S batteries, the equivalent kV the equivalent RPM for a 6S battery to a 2400 kV motor on 4S would be 1666 kV. But nobody flies 1666 kV motors on 6S. They tend to fly 1750, 1800, 1850, 1900, maybe even higher than that. And that means that people flying 6S are getting more RPM at the prop, more thrust, more performance, and somehow, there doesn't really seem to be any downsides. It's just more. Now, I first had the idea to build this quadcopter when I did a Rotorite episode where Bubby had built an 8S freestyle quad. And my first thought was, that's silly, that's too much. It's just bigger numbers for bigger numbers sake. But that was not my experience when I flew the quad. Somehow, it seemed like we had gone even further in a great direction. You see, this quadcopter has 1500 kV motors on it and 1500 kV motors on 8S is equivalent to 3000 kV motors on 4S. And that's just insane. That shouldn't work, especially because this quadcopter weighs 850 grams and heavy quadcopters are especially susceptible to being overpropped with too high of a kV motor. But when I flew that quadcopter of Bubby's, it flew amazing. So how's this gonna fly? Only one way to find out. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. So we are cruising at about 20% throttle. That is really low. Obviously we are making a ton of RPM here, uh, but it's flying pretty much normal. Watch how long I keep going up after I get off throttle. It's forever. And there's no prop wash at the bottom. Uh, let's try, let's try this, let's try this. Let's do a, a run down the field, ready? That's insane. 
Oh, it's got so much speed. I mean, it feels like I'm flying a racing drone, a lightweight racing drone, uh, but I'm not. This is a seven, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, please don't be broken. Please don't have smoked. Okay. Okay, we're okay. Uh, more about that later in the video. Let me check my camera. I mean, it feels like I'm flying like a lightweight racing rig. It's so fast, so low in the throttle, and it's just so smooth. In the same way that like a 600 gram racing rig has no prop wash and just leaps forward when you touch the throttle, this does the same thing, but it weighs it weighs 850 grams. This is insane. Oh, okay, I'm still up, I'm still going. Just insane, just rips through the sky. Look at that punch. Look at that punch. This thing weighs 850 grams. Look at that punch. I'm barely touching full throttle either. Like, it's so much power. It's so much power. Like, it's just preposterous. It's kind of pointless, but then if you're not gonna hit full throttle, why would you ju just use a lower voltage? Well, maybe there's a reason, which we'll talk about in a bit. Look how it just jumps. Look how it just jumps. Ready? Just gets there, just teleports from point A to point B. It's crazy. So much power, so much control, and the pit tune is bananas. Whoa, where am I going? I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea what I'm doing. What am I doing? I'm scared to put it into, I don't wanna crash it, so I'm not putting it into any tiny little gaps because I wanna really figure out how it flies before I destroy it. This is bananas. I can't believe this thing weighs 850 grams. Oh, hello. Okay, okay, okay. The motors are fine. They're a little warm. They're not even hot. It's crazy. You may be looking at this and thinking, my God, this is amazing. Finally, I can fly a big freaking heavy, durable. This is the Flyfish RC Volador frame and it is a chonky build, but it is super, super durable. Finally, I can fly a heavy, durable freestyle frame with a GoPro, with a big battery that's gonna give me five or six minutes of flight time and no compromise when it comes to responsiveness and performance. And to some degree that's true, but there are compromises. One of the compromises is price. So these batteries are way more expensive than a 6S battery. They're, and there's like only like one of them in, like in existence, the in this size and weight for this type of quadcopter. There are way, there are lots of 8S batteries, but they're out there for planes and so forth. They're not really usable for this purpose, but maybe we'll see more as time goes on. The other thing is that there's like two ESCs that are made for this application that support 8S, and uh, so your, your choices are limited there. They're pretty expensive ESCs, and everything in the quad has to run off a voltage regulator because everything in the quad except the ESC can only take 6S. And the voltage regulator has to be able to take 35, 36 volts, and those are not cheap, and it has to be able to provide some amps. It's like a $27 voltage regulator. You can get them cheaper, but they're gigantic. They're like the only good one is really expensive. The price of this build is much more than uh, a typical 6S build. And 
the other part of it that I really feel like I have to get off my chest is I just think that the reliability of the ESC has to go down when you go from 6S to 8S. On the one hand, higher voltage means lower current, but on the other hand, higher voltage means you're closer to the volt limit of the FETs, and it just feels, to, I mean, so far so good, but it feels to me like if a whole bunch of people switch to 8S, we would see a whole bunch of blown ESCs and ESCs are not cheap. So those are things you should keep in mind. But there's one aspect of this that I still wish I knew more about, and it is why when you go to a higher voltage, you can also go to a higher RPM and s seemingly experience no negative effects. And normal guys like me don't know the answer, but you know who does know the answer? Chris Rosser. Hi there, JB. The difference between 8S 1500KV and 4S 3000KV is really interesting. Let's say that we wanted to make a 3000KV motor to run on 4S that would have identical performance to a 1500KV motor run on 8S. Well, we need to double the KV. And KV is primarily determined by the number of wraps of copper wire around each of the poles of the stator in the motor. So if we want to double the KV, we need to halve the number of wraps of copper wire going around each of these poles. So that sounds easy enough. But if we want to keep the same performance, we need to keep the amount of copper in the motor the same. Otherwise, um, with less copper, we're gonna have more resistance and we're gonna get worse performance. So if we wanna keep the amount of copper the same, when we halve the number of wraps of wire, we need to double the cross-sectional area of each wrap. And that turns out to be really difficult from a manufacturing standpoint, because as you make the wire twice the cross-sectional area, you make it significantly thicker, it becomes a lot harder to wind that much stiffer wire around the stator. And in general, manufacturers just can't do it. And you'll often find that high KV motors will be slightly lighter than their lower KV variants, and that's because the manufacturer hasn't been able to increase the wire thickness enough to compensate for the reduction in the number of turns that they're putting on each of the poles. In an ideal world, if we were to halve the number of turns and double the cross-sectional area of each turn, the motor at twice the KV would have a quarter of the resistance. So our 3000 KV motor would have a quarter of the resistance of our 1500 kV motor. And that means that if we put the same power into it, then we would expect the current to be double, because if you go from 8S to 4S at the same power, you need double the current. And the heating in the motor, which is I squared R, is going to be four times, because you've got double the current squared, and then times R, which we would expect to be a quarter. So we'd have the same heating, and that would give us equal performance. What actually happens is that R turns out to not be anywhere near a quarter of the 1500 kV version. And so as a result, when you put the same power into the motor, you get a lot more heating in the higher kV variant because you haven't been able to reduce that resistance as much as you would expect to be able to in an ideal case. And this means that at the same power level, the 3000 kV motor is in real life gonna get a lot hotter and it's gonna burn out. And that's the fundamental reason why when you go to lower KV, you tend to be able to get better performance. It's just because it's easier to manufacture a slightly lower KV motor. You can get a bit more copper into the windings around the stator. Um, you get a bit of a resistance benefit. You get a reduction in the heating, and therefore the motor can run at a higher power level for longer without getting too hot. Aside from just the benefits in the motor, you also get other kind of ancillary benefits with moving to a higher voltage. Because you have less current flowing through the system at the same power level, you know, you double the voltage, you halve the current for the same power, you get less I squared R heating in the wires to the motor, in the MOSFETs on the ESC, the leads to the battery, and in the battery internal resistance as well. So the result of those improvements in efficiency, both in the motor and throughout the power delivery system, allows you to run a higher equivalent KV on 8S than you could on 4S to deliver more power to the motor, both more peak power and more power for a longer time without the motor overheating, and that's fundamentally what's giving you that improvement in performance that you see with 6S, low KV, and 8S, even lower KV. At this point, you may be asking yourself, okay, how can I build one of these for myself? And I actually have a full build tutorial and setup guide for this exact quadcopter. It is gonna release on my channel in two days. It is currently available on my Patreon, early access for patrons only, 
So there's a link in the video description of my Patreon if you wanna sign up, head on over there and watch it, or in just two days, it'll come out on my channel, and when that happens, a card will appear on screen here to uh, link you to it. And if you don't see that card, then it's still a patron exclusive. <laughs> so freaking cool.